Tempo early, baby. Set it early. Party. Chiefs podcast in the kingdom. Chiefs kingdom ACU crew. What's going on? What's going on? Back at you with another podcast for that ass. This is Mike. I'm talking about some winners and losers from the combine. Uh, Got a little sneak peek of one of the winners and losers right there when it come on. I'll tell you that. Those Texas kids, they put on a show yesterday to a certain degree. Um, they had their shortcomings, but we'll get to that in a minute. In a minute. Uh, appreciate you guys being here. Going to talk about some winners and losers uh, from day one. So that's going to include defensive line. That's going to include some linebackers. Appreciate you guys being here with me. I uh, hope you got to check out Steve's first mock draft. We released that this morning. Uh, he did it last night, put it up this morning. Uh, he touched on some. I don't think he actually drafted any of the winners or losers from uh, the combine yesterday, in which I'm going to be talking about today. Um, but before I jump in, I just want to say welcome. Welcome. Good to see you guys here. Uh, we got JCP in the chat. We got Chief Kelsey, Brian Parrott. We got Gary. We got the usual suspects. We got the usual suspects. We got Gabriel in the house. We got JCP. What's going on, guys? We're just talking some football. Um, going to be a lot of football content, a lot of draft content, a lot of combine content over the next few days. This is where we're at, guys. It, it, it is fast and furious from here on out. But uh, without further ado, let's just jump in to a few of the people that I thought that I just thought looked pretty good yesterday and helped their draft stock. And I think the first on my list, and this guy's going to be way out of our league to be able to grab, but I think he solidified himself as a top 10 pick yesterday. And that's going to be Dallas Turner out of Alabama. Now we're not going to be able to get to Dallas Turner. There's no way he's top 10. Um, but he checked all the boxes yesterday for sure. He's going to probably be the top defender off the board and he just looked great. His his height, his weight, his length. He had a thirty four point three eight inch arms. Uh, he ran a four four six forty. He just showed so much explosion. He even ran. I think he had a forty point five vertical jump, which topped his entire group, and a ten foot seven broad jump uh, that was also top five. He was super super impressive. I just Dallas Turner coming after Will Anderson and they were like, look, is he going to be able to set the edge? He's going to be able to do this and do that. And it took him a little time, but he got there and the chiefs don't have a chance to get him. But I just wanted to, to just reiterate what Dallas Turner did for himself yesterday. He looked pretty good. Another guy that done a lot for his draft stock, I believe was Jared verse uh, edge out of Florida State. He's 6'4", 254. Um, he had an all-around. He, he had a really solid showing in Indy. Um, he checked a lot of the measurable boxes. He looked good in his on-field drills. Um, he didn't do amazing in the drills, though, but he accelerated and and finished them strong and hard. Uh, he showed that he, he runs with aggression. Uh, he's just... He, man, the way he just ran, he just... He, he stomped the ground. He... He just, I don't know. He he just looked the part, and I think he's now solidified himself as a first-round pick, which, by the way, he's behind a few other guys. He's behind um, Leatu Latu from UCLA so far. He may or may not be behind Darius Robinson at this point. Personally, I don't think he is. Uh, but there's a few, man. There's a few coming up the boards pretty hot, pretty quickly. And to be honest, I just think Jared Verse shows all the intangibles to to do well in the NFL. I I think he's fine. I think he probably he probably goes now before pick twenty, somewhere between I'll say between ten and twenty five, somewhere in that range, mid first round for sure for Jared Verse. 
Um, another one we can talk about is I thought Byron Murphy from Texas looked pretty spectacular. I think he showed a lot of what made him, it just made him like what he is to, to, to lots of people. Um, if you watch film, he just pops off. He's so quick. I know he's a little short and he's a little, I guess that's it. His measurables, those measurables are, are kind of the, the downfall to Byron Murphy. But when you watch him on film, it, it's so hard to just overlook those. He's super athletic. He ran a 4.87 40 yard dash. Now look, that's not like going to blow anybody's socks off. It's really not. But you don't run 40 yard dashes as offensive lineman too often. His 10 yard split, by the way, was a 1.69. If you compare that to another def- defensive tackle that has done very, very well, has done very, very well, Chris Jones ran a 1.69 10 yard split at his uh, combine appearance. So I think he done exactly what he needed to do, I think, in a way. Um, his RAS score was huge. He ended up finishing in the 90th percentile among all interior defensive linemen. I just feel like athletically, athletically, he showed exactly what he was there to do. When he did the hoop drills and he was bending, he was showing hip flexibility. Uh, there was one where he put his foot in the ground and ran – and I mean, it's just insane. And with Johnny Newton from Illinois, which is probably his similar, the guy he's battling, who's going to go one, Johnny Newton or Byron Murphy, because they're pretty similar. Uh, Johnny Newton didn't do any drills or anything yesterday. So I firmly believe Byron Murphy now may have put himself as the number one DT if you're looking at that form. And again, his running mate, the De- Tavondre Sweat, by the way, that cat, this dude is a monster. And he ended up running a pretty, pretty good. I, I don't have his exact number on the 40, or do I? Can I pull that up really quick? See if I can run it here. His uh 40 was a 527. And I mean, that is pretty good for a big man. Pretty good with a guy that's 366 pounds, by the way. 366 pounds. That is insanity to run a five two seven, but his jumps were underwhelming. Uh, he he looked like he got tired during the positional drills, which was also a thing in college. Like it looked like they had to take him off the field a lot. I mean, when you're three hundred, let's think about this: when you're almost four hundred freaking pounds, you're going to get tired. You're going to get tired. His vertical was only like twenty six inches. His broad jump was like eight feet. He scored super low. If you look at his RAS score, it's like a four, a four out of 10. So a lot of people said he hurt his draft stock. He he was a loser. He showed that he's not a Don Terry Poe. He showed he's not a Jordan Davis. And no, I don't think he is either of those. I think he's, he's, he's just a guy that wins on film. He had a pretty good win rate there at Texas. And he showed that he could get after the quarterback a little bit. I think Byron Murphy may have he may be gone before we get to pick. Tavondre Sweat could be sitting on the board. I don't know if that's somewhere we would want to go. Uh, another kid that looked really good was Braden Fisk uh, out of Florida State. I mean, good night. Did anybody have a more impressive uh, forty than Braden Fisk? By the way, he ran a four point seven eight. That's flat out incredible. That was the fastest among all DTs. His RAS score went to a 9.97 out of a possible 10. That ranked him out of the years 1987 to 2024. There have been 1,620 1620 defensive tackles ranked on RAS scores, and Braden Fisk ranked 6th out of every defensive tackle out of the 1,620 from 1987 to 2024. That was impressive. He had a 33 and a half inch vert. He had almost a, I think it was a little bit over nine foot broad jump. His 10 yard split was a 1.8, 1.68, I believe is what it was. A 1.68 10 yard split. And again, you, the 10 yard split is what you're looking for. 
when it comes to uh, these big offensive and defensive linemen, especially defensive linemen. Uh, that's what you're looking for. These guys aren't going no more than 10, 15 yards. Now, they may have to track somebody up the field a little bit if they break one off, and but you're never going to see Chris Jones running 40 yards up the field and tackling somebody. It's not going to happen. If it is, that's sad that he got beat by our um, linebackers and safeties and corners who apparently decided they weren't going to play. So that's just the way it rolls. But I think those those kids right there done a lot. I think Braden Fisk may have made himself, geez, a lot of money yesterday. I think he did. Like at, I was putting him probably somewhere in the mid to late second round probably before this because on film, a lot of people's asked me about Braden Fisk, by the way. On film, Braden Fisk is a guy that plays um, – with urgency, he plays tough. He's he's got a high motor. The thing about Braden Fisk is, is he's not the most physically imposing, so he can get washed out of certain plays. He'll go times where he's not there, and then there's times where he looks like just this game wrecker. He really does. His I I want to check his exact measurables because I do not want to get those wrong. Um, let me see if I can find his exact measurables from yesterday. I want to get this right. So I don't want to like, I don't want to just pop off some numbers. That's not proper, but I will say, okay, here it is. Braden Fisk. He's a uh, six. He's about six foot. Is that six foot four? Two ninety two. I'm not for sure if six foot four is right. I want to make sure that's right. I, I don't think he was six foot four. Where's this cat at? Let me see if I can find him. I do not think he would come in at six foot four. That seems in, insane. He did. Six foot four. Six foot four, 292. So not bad. And sorry that, that ad came on if you heard that. Um, six four, 292, 31 inch arms, nine and three eighth, three eighth inch hands. The 31 inch arm length is a little short. It's a little short. I think you want to be somewhere around the 32 to 33, to be honest. But you can work with it. Um, I went back and looked a little bit. And if you look at defensive tackles that led the league in sacks this year. So you got Justin Matabuke. You got Chris Jones, Quentin Williams, Christian Wilkins, Aaron Donald. Those are your like prototypical guys, right, that you would be comparing this kid to. His arm length's 31. That would, that's a little bit of a problem. The closest one, he he's over an inch and a fourth to an inch and a half shorter than all of them. And you would say, eh, it's an inch, it's an inch. That's a big deal. That's a big deal. Now his uh his his split, his ten yard split's a one six eight. That's point zero one faster than Chris Jones. Um that's point one per point zero one slower than Quinnen Williams. So he's right there amongst them in actual 10-yard split times. So, I mean, can you overlook the arm length? I Maybe. But I feel like arm length is one of those things that is very, very important um, in the draft process. And it's one thing that gets overlooked. They look at length in every position. If it's a corner, if it's a safety, if it's a linebacker, they want you to have a little bit longer arms in case you get beat. You can tip a ball. If you're a lineman, you're going in, you want to keep those offensive linemen off of you as a defensive lineman, as an edge rusher. You want to you want to be able to extend and and keep them off of you. You want to get your hands up. You want to tip passes. So length is a is a big one. But yeah, uh Ruben, what's up Ruben? Uh Ruben says is our DB coach going to the Niners? I'm not for sure. I heard he had an interview. I heard he had an interview, but I don't really know. Something seems like something seems like the Niners just interviewed him just to try to take a dig at the Chiefs in a way. And I'm not saying he's not deserving of it, but it just it seems strange that that would be the somebody they would pick. Then again, I mean, like the Chiefs got a good defense and Joe Cullen and Spags and all of them, they're not going anywhere, obviously. I wonder if they would take Connor Embry as their defensive coordinator. I don't know. Wouldn't say. Uh, Brian Perry says, isn't FAU 31-inch arms? Uh, I'll have to look. I'm not for sure why FAU. Um, let's go to Felix. 
let's go look at his um draft profile and see what he actually measured in on. If you hear another ad, I'm sorry. You may not hear ads. It may just be coming through my headphones, which means you guys aren't even hearing it. So if that's the case, that's good. That's good. Um, let's see. They don't have his measurables on here from the combine. Oh, yeah, they do. 33 and a half inch arms, Brian. 33 and a half inch arms is what he measured in. So you're two and a half inches short there. But I will say this. At 33 and a half inch arms, FAU didn't light the world on fire, which shows you that it's not just arm talent. Or not arm talent, but arm length. <laughs> arm talent. That's great. What if quarterbacks just got judged by how long their arms are? They're like, look, bro, you got 40-inch arms. You know how much velocity you can get on that ball when those bad boys whip through? Uh, he was 6'3", 255, 33 and a half inch arms. Why did he run his 10-yard split? That would be a nice little gauge to see what's up. Felix did not run at the combine. He has no combine numbers up. I wonder what his 10-yard split is. Um, pro. Let's look at his pro day numbers. Maybe he ran it at his pro day. Hmm. They're not showing that either. Did th did this cat even have to do anything, or did the Chiefs just tell him he was getting drafted in the first round? Like, well, like what happened? Let's see what happens here. I'm bringing up some some. I'm I'm digging into my my deep resources here, so it may take me a second. 10-yard split. He did not run a 10-yard split at the combine. At his pro day, he did not run a 10-yard split. We drafted Felix Anudike Uzoma based on zero testing. He ran no 40, no splits. Um, he didn't, he didn't do anything at the combine. He didn't do nothing at the combine. Okay. But his pro day, he didn't run a 40 at the pro day. At least this is not showing. He didn't bench at the pro day. He didn't do a vert at the pro day. He didn't do a broad jump at the pro day. He didn't do a 20-yard shuttle, and he did not do a three-cone drill at the pro day. Felix Anudike Uzoma got drafted purely off of film, it looks like, and the fact that he was a hometown kid. I hope Felix comes around, but could that be... Might that be something to be like, hey, if these guys aren't going to work out and you don't really get to see what you have, what do we really have here? Like, what's happening? Um, let's get back to some winners and losers. But first, I'll answer this. Mike, how does Casey save if they don't sign Townsend? How much do they save if they don't sign Townsend? I, nothing, really. He's not under contract from here on out. So, I mean, you would save what he signs for. Um, I'm not for sure what they signed Ariza for. So anything over Ariza, you would have to count that as a loss. And then probably Ariza would be a loss because he would now probably be cut. But yeah, um, I'm I'm hoping that Felix comes on, Brian. Yeah, he says he's a consolation pick because we blew the trade up. I'm still, I still think they were going after the left tackle. I think they were going after Harrison. A lot of people said Mozzie Smith. I'm just not feeling that one. I just don't understand that one. Um, Amani says, hopefully Fe Felix can become something. Yeah. Hope so, man. Um, Lego says, wondering if Cole's going to show up and break the net again. If he does, I'm sending him a poison pizza. I'm going to make that guy poop for a week. If he eats that pizza next time I send it, that's what he's going to get. Ray Ray said, Steve had a mock draft video and I love the Malachi Corley pick. Steve Smith Jr. Really likes the kid. Yeah, so I watched some of Steve's. If you've watched the mock, you have to go watch it. In the first round, I'm just going to tell you. I'm going to tell you the first two round picks because I think it's relevant. In the first round, he sit. He didn't do any trades. He took um, Tyler Guyton out of Oklahoma. A lot of people are saying he's only a right tackle. He's only a right tackle. We don't need a right tackle. We need a left tackle. Tyler Guyton can play both positions. Everything I've read Every single scout I've found, and I've looked at some of the more notable ones, I've looked at some of the guys that are not. I've actually talked to people that watched him at the Senior Bowl. I think it was the Senior Bowl he was at. And uh, they said he held up very well, and they think he can move up and down the line. They think he can play guard. They think he can play tackle. And they think he can play both sides. So I think, and in my opinion, I think Guyton's going to – 
maybe surprise some people. He may actually be off the board before, say, pick 25. He he may be the Anton Harrison of last year, like that one that comes in and surprises. And would it really surprise anybody? He's an Oklahoma lineman. Makes total sense. And then in second round, Steve took Malachi Corley. And again, that's a good pick. A lot of people are wanting that wide receiver in the first round. But you've got to say, look, is Brett Veach really going to spend a first round receiver? I don't know if he is or not. Um, but I do believe we have more glaring needs possibly than wide receivers still. And plus, we're all under the assumption that we're going to do something in free agency. You're not going to take a stab at a big free agent and then spend a first-round pick on it unless Brett Veach overcorrects, in which we've seen that a lot of times. We've seen it, and that definitely could be something he does. So it's all just a shot in the dark. But look, Malachi Corley, I believe when it's all said and done, you will not get him at that pick that Steve picked him at in the second round. It will not happen. I am very close after watching his film because he averages about the ball's in the air about four to five yards before it hits them. They get them the ball very quickly. And, and a lot of people saying, you know, Debo Samuel. Do, and, yeah, I get the the comp. I think it's a little bit of a lazy comp because that's just, you know, that's what you see out of him. But he runs hard. The problem is he's from a small school. And where does – okay, that's my one knock is he's from Western. Western's right up the road. Not saying Western's not a good football school. Not saying they've not put out a lot of good players. But look, they put out Bailey Zappi last year, and Bailey Zappi looked like he could do some things, and then he kind of struggled. Uh, they've put out a few other players, and once they get on the main stage, they kind of struggled. Uh, now, Halsey, the corner that they come out with last year, he actually looked pretty good, and then he ended up with the Browns. We ended up cutting him. But I'll say he also came from a big Pac-12 school. I want to say he transferred in from Oregon or one of them. But yeah, I'm not knocking Malachi Corley, and I actually think Malachi Corley has a chance to get into the first round. I honestly do. Some teams at the very end of the first round, maybe even the Chiefs, could look at him right there at number 32 because you're not going to get him after pick 45-ish. I would say that's his floor right now, or his... Yeah, I'd say his floor is like pick 45. I would say his ceiling right now, in my opinion, is late first round, 25 and up. I really think he could get there when it's all said and done. That might be jumping the gun a little bit too much, but I think by the time he shows out at the combine, I think by the time he does his pro day, I think by the time everybody starts to learn about the small time, small town kid from Western, he's going to jump up a little bit, but all the same traits. And I'm not comparing them at all, like in any similar fashion, but get the, get him the ball in space. He makes people miss. He runs like a running back. Get him the ball on a screen. Let him play the slot. He can move out the wide. Just get him the ball quick. He runs hard. He makes people miss. Who all does this sound like? He's from a small he's from a small school. What does this sound like? It sounds like the spitting image of every every Sky Moore analysis of, that we had two years ago. It, it's the exact same thing almost. And I'm not saying they're the same player, but I'm just saying you take a small school with a wide receiver that needs the ball in space that will initiate contact but could make you miss. And it, I'm not saying they're any similar, but there are a lot of eerily similar similarities. Say that five times fast. But again, I don't think they're the same player in the slightest. I really don't. But I just, I, I thought that was a weird little, a weird little thing. Uh, but, uh, Oregon's just draft some burner wide receivers who can actually track the long ball. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a bunch in this draft. The one I'm really looking forward to to see if he cannot. I think once he runs, definitely at his pro day, once Brian Thomas Jr. from LSU runs, I think this kid solidifies himself to be a middle of the first round pick. I don't think he gets by Buffalo. Like, I honestly don't, unless Buffalo just falls in love with somebody like a Keon Coleman. And again, if Keon Coleman runs in the four fours, he now probably makes himself a top 25, the to top 28 pick. And so it just all comes down to running. But, but yeah, Thomas is one that I want to watch there at the end of the first round. If he was that almost like just by a product of all other good players or be a, be a casualty of a draft board situation. 
Brian Thomas Jr. from LSU would be somebody that I would be very intrigued about as to be able to stretch the field and who can track a deep ball. That's definitely one of them, for sure. Uh, Ron with the gifted membership. Appreciate you, Ron. Appreciate you, brother. Uh, that's $5 for me. That's $5 for me to get on here and talk some football today. I appreciate you. We're almost the minimum wage today, ladies and gents. We're almost there. Appreciate you, Ron. If you got that gift from Ron, give him a big old thank you. Uh, put some catch-ups in the chat for Ron, our boy, who's always coming in with the legendary, uh, the legendary status of the gifted membership that he is. He is Ron. Darius says, I'd rather have Thomas than Coleman. I think there's more upside to Thomas than there is Coleman. And again, I like Keon Coleman, but Keon Coleman, I'm going to tell you, Steve really likes Keon Coleman. I think Keon Coleman makes some good catches, um, but I think he's constantly having to make those catches because he ha he doesn't do a lot of good separation. Like he's not good at separating. His routes are just a tad bit lazy in my opinion. Um, you can tell he's always just bullied DBs with his size. Um, I think he's too comfortable doing jump balls and stuff. Like he he's not a master craftsman at the route running ability. And again, some of that is just because sometimes your size physically prevents you from being a great route runner. Like sometimes you you get so fast that you have to like, you know, you cut them off a little sloppily or whatever. But Keon Coleman, the thing that that I didn't like is there were so many games where Keon Coleman would just disappear. They didn't even try to get him the ball. In key situations, he didn't get the ball. There was no production. And then games that he was good in, he was ex exceptional in. But it's just like, why, was, why wasn't why was he a integral part of the offense every time Florida State needed it? And there was a lot of times Florida State didn't need it. I get it. There was a lot of times they were blowing teams out and this and that, but I don't know. I think if I had to put the knock on Keon Coleman, it is just the, I want to see if his speed, I want to see if he can get in the four fours. If he runs in the four fives, if he runs late four fives, like anything after a four five five, probably I think at a four five five, he could possibly get at the end of round one, anything over a four five five, which sadly, I don't know why we're just have to base everything on speed nowadays, but I think that's what the tiny minute things that separate these guys. And I think if he runs over a four five five, which I don't think he will, I think he falls to day two easily. And if he runs in the four fours, he may possibly be a mid first round pick. So there's a lot of things there, a lot of things there. And yeah, we're still going to, we're going to get into it a lot more. I'm just now digging in deep and I'm, I'm starting to get in. I've had 500 names thrown at me in probably the last five days. I hit it running full speed. I'm in the process right now of getting everybody together, getting their measurables down, starting to watch film. I'm starting to rank players and to what I think per category. So quarterback, running back, blah, 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 down the board. I'm trying to get the top tens of each positions. But now, before I could even get that done, before I could even get it done, because there's so much, we're at the combine. And the combine is going to shake that up. It, like, believe it or not, it's going to shake it up. But that's another thing I try to tell people as well. Trust your film. Some of these guys got three years of film, four years of film, five years. Some of these guys you've been watching since high school. Like, look, people were watching Caleb Williams in high school. Trust that film more than you trust one single game of film. So, in other words, trust your body of work over that one single thing. Um, there's a an offensive tackle. I think his name's Rosengarter. He's a tackle for Washington, and he struggled in the college football, the, the the championship game. He struggled. But other than that, he's he's solid film his entire career. And a lot of people are saying, well, he's not good. He struggled in the – I don't at all. I think that kid's going to be a second-round pick, and he's got a chance to get to the back end of the first round. But a lot of people will say that. Or they'll come out at the combine. They run a little bit slower 40, and – and then everybody's ready to write them off. And it's like, well, look, they wrote off Jerry Rice. He was the third receiver taken all because he didn't run so fast. And you see how that worked. Larry Fitzgerald wasn't the fastest guy. You don't always have to be the fastest. You don't got to do things. But I say trust everything. What you see, don't just trust that moment in time. Because, again, you might get too infatuated and say, oh, he just, you know, he just looked a little, a little slow you know, on the, on the combine. So I think I'm just going to drop them out. And it's like, well, I, don't do that. Don't do it. I, I don't tend to do it. And 
I just feel like some people can have bad days. Now, look, if, if he looks slow on the combine and then you go back and you're like, wow, that's why he couldn't get to the quarterback. That's why he was always a tip tip short, just like George Karloftis sometimes when he was a rookie. But George has worked on himself. He's worked on his burst. He's worked on his moves. Uh, he's worked on everything. I think he's even worked on his short speed burst. I think he's done that as well. And and George has now turned himself into a double-digit guy. And I believe George will continue to get better. But also with George, see, he was a he's a perfect, perfect guy for what I'm talking about. All season long, every bit of his college film, George Karloftis was a top 10 pick. Hands down, he was a top 10 pick. And then the closer we kept getting to the draft, oh, he ran a little bit too... He's a little bit slow in the 40. He's a little bit slow in his 10-yard split. His arms are a little too short. His, who knows? I don't like his haircut last week. Uh, he don't have the spin move. He don't have this. He don't have that. And before you know it, everybody talked themselves from Karloff as being a top five pick to the fact that that sucker fell all the way down to the end of the first round. And the Chiefs said, I'll take him. And look what you got. And I said that too. The whole time people were just negative. I like Ryan and RGR, but they did not like George Karloftis. They didn't think he was very good. And the entire time I was saying, you all keep sleeping on him. You keep sleeping. And and I said, he's the one guy. I would probably went out of the whole thing. And then lo and behold, Chiefs grab him. I think he's looked good. But yeah, let's get back to uh, a little bit of the winners and losers here. Let's touch on a few linebackers. I thought Peyton Wilson from NC State, by the way. And you would say, why are we looking at linebacker? We need an off-ball linebacker. It's not for sure that Drew Tranquil will be able to come back. Maybe people start throwing money at him. Maybe he decides he wants to go and, and get the money. Maybe he wants this, that, everything else. It's just not always possible he's back. We're probably not going to bring back Willie Gay. Now, we do got some young linebackers. We got Isaiah Moore. Um let me pull this off the screen. We got Isaiah Moore. He played with him right here at NC State. Isaiah Moore. He was more of the middle linebacker. Um, Peyton Wilson. He was the but the Butkus Award winner, best linebacker in the country. Dude, he flat out just killed it at the combine yesterday. He flat out destroyed it. He does have some knee injuries. He had multiple knee injuries. He's had a few shoulder injuries. I get it. But his athleticism and the way that he ran yesterday, he ran a 4-4-3 40-yard dash at 233 pounds. He's about the size of Willie Gay, and he runs a 4-4-3, which, by the way, Willie Gay was right in that range. He had a 34-and-a-half-inch vertical. He had a 1.54 10-yard split. He showed he is a athlete among athletes, and he, he just, like, he destroyed it. I think he's probably put himself in uh, talk to be the first linebacker off the board. I think that he shows intangibles that uh, I'm just saying, I think Peyton Willis is a nice, is a nice pick. I don't have any problems taking him in the second round because he's tough. He's fast. He's got good instinct. He's got good hands, by the way. Um, that kid's going to be, I think he's going to be a, a, a ball player. I just, I like him. Another linebacker that I thought done pretty well yesterday uh, was Trevin Wallace from Kentucky. Um, he come out of UK this year. Not a lot of people thought he was going to come out, but he did. He come out and, uh, I mean, he does a lot of good things. I get it that he was younger and this and that, but. He does a lot of good stuff. Let me bring up what he did yesterday because I th he very much impressed me with his um his 40-yard dash for sure. His 40-yard dash was, let me bring this bad boy up. Oh no, they've now put in the updated ones. Let's get just a linebacker here. Sorry, this is going to take forever. Okay, Trevin Wallace, linebacker. He ran a 4-5, a 4 5 one forty which was very, very fast. He actually matched, he matched Edger and Cooper from A&M, who, by the way, Edger and Cooper with Peyton Wilson is going to be the top two corners on the board. Edger and Cooper from A&M. This kid is a physical specimen, and he flat out solidified himself yesterday. He's a winner. But yeah, I thought Trevin Wallace from UK done a good job. I thought Trevin Wallace showed that he was fast, he was quick, 
Uh, he's fluid in the hips. I thought he looked good, and I think he he's probably cemented himself as a third round pick. Maybe even could get into round two, and if he gets to round four, it's a flat out steal on Trevin Wallace. Um, so yeah, those three linebackers, amazing. Edron Cooper again. I'll bring him up again. Love Edron Cooper. Uh, he just, just I I just really like everything about him. I think he is a heck of a linebacker. If the Chiefs was to be like, look, linebacker's a need. We're taking a linebacker. Uh, we can't get Drew Tranquil back. Uh, we've lost Willie Gay. We have Nick Bolton and and Leo. We need another linebacker. Edger and Cooper all day long, I'll take him. All day long. I don't even care if you took him at 32, I think I take him. He's that kind of player. Please go watch some film on Edger and Cooper and watch how he can uh, – he can spy a quarterback. He can close the gap so quick. He's not afraid to hit you. Um, another big guy that had a good and a bad day. Good day, Chop Robinson out of Penn State. He had a good day because he said he was going to run a 4-4-40, and he did. He ran like a 4-4-7 at a defensive end. Chop Robinson did it. He actually did it. But he he lost a little bit. Why? Because of his wingspan and his arm length. I told you that's pretty – uh. Pretty important in the NFL. And let me find his exact arm length because you will be very surprised at the actual numbers on this. It was, um, good night. It was horrible, guys. I want to get it right. I want to get it right. Chop Robinson, his arm length was 32 and a half, and, but his wingspan is what got him. His wingspan was a seventy or a seventy six and a fourth, so seventy six and a fourth. To put that into perspective, okay, on Chop Robinson, if you put that to perspective of what that is, I want to say that is the lowest, the lowest, um, recorded arm length and wingspans that there's been as a total since 1999 in the combine. So we're going on almost 30 years. Okay. Uh, but they are measurable to um, Yannick Ngakwe. Okay. So I'm not saying he, he, he won't be horrible again at his measurements. He was 32 and a fourth. Okay. Now I've done a little bit of research at 32 and a fourth and I'm going to take up chop off the board. At 32 and a fourth, if you look back now, I went back and looked at some of the sack leaders from this year. Trey Hendrickson, Daniil Hunter, Max Crosby, Miles Garrett. 32 and a fourth is longer than Trey Hendrickson, by the way. Longer than Trey Hendrickson, who led, I think, everybody in sacks. Uh, Trey's arms were just 32 inches long. Max Crosby, 32 and seven eighths. So you're talking about this much longer for Max Crosby. So only that much longer. So again, it's not the end of the world for these guys, especially when you're in a four, four, seven. Now I will say that chop Robinson on some of the film I've watched do, does not have good technique. He doesn't have the best technique you've ever seen, but he does explode off the ball. He explodes off the line. It's, I mean, he's fine, but at the same time, he's just a little undersized and his techniques bad. So I think chop should be, Round two, in my opinion, maybe round two. That's what I would say. I would say he's somewhere between it, pick 32. Let's see. Let's say pick 33 and 50. I'll just give him a general range he's between 33 and 50. But if somebody falls in love with that 40 time and he proves that, hey, like if he goes and does some workouts and shows that his technique's getting a little better, this and that. And maybe his arm length and wingspan wasn't measured properly. Maybe they up it a little bit at the uh, at the pro day. You know how they do it. I could see him slide into the back end of the first, but I think that's a, his ceiling is about pick twenty five ish, in my opinion. So, but yeah, I'd say Chop Robinson's a day two pick. Um, let's talk about some losers. I thought there was a few losers. Tavondre Sweat could also be considered a loser, in my opinion. Again. He's got a good win rate and he's a good clogger of everything, but he's just, he seems to just be out of shape a lot. And it just, I don't know. It, 
I feel like a lot of times football question on those big guys come into it. Like, are you, you're on, you're borderline being, um, very just not, not it. Right. Like you're right there. You got to take care of yourself to keep yourself that big and that motivated and that whatever. So I think Devondre sweat has a chance to, as some teams could have looked at it as a loss yesterday and some teams could have been a win. Another loss was, um, Austin Booker from Kansas. Uh, I don't think Austin Booker from Kansas had a good showing yesterday. I really don't. Um, he's he's an intriguing player. I mean, he only started one game in his whole career. He played like 500 snaps. Um, but he has good pass rush potential. I get it. But I just don't think he done anything to raise his stock. I really don't. Um, he only weighed in at 240 pounds. Uh, his frame was just lanky. He was super slender. I just don't know. I think offensive tackles are going to throw him around a little bit. I really do. Um, it got worse when he ran his 40. A guy like that needs to be running the 4-4 Chop Robinson. He ran a 4.79. So you got Chop Robinson out here just – he's beating him by like two yards in a 40. I mean, that's the NFL average, about 4.79, but come on. At 240, you can't do it. You can't do it. Uh, his vert was only a 32 and a half, very lackluster. It's just, he didn't even do the agility drills. He opted out of them. He was having such a bad day, he just opted out. He said, screw the agility drills, I'm not even doing it. So, yeah, I now feel like Austin Booker, um, he's landed himself outside probably the top 150. He's probably outside the top one, unless somebody just wants to take a shot on him. Um, I thought Braylon Trice from Washington. When you watch film with Braylon Tr Trice, you don't see nothing outstanding with him, but you see somebody that that does decently, um, does decently well in a way. Like it's not the worst thing you've ever watched when you're watching Braylon Trice, but he was just below average in almost every measurable area there was. Just a six three. 245. That's just too small. Um, he had troubles in drills. He just he just didn't do drills very well. Um, he was injured in one of his on-field drills, and he pushed through it, which, I mean, I guess you could say he's tough to do that, I guess. But I, I just think he had – it was just a poor performance. Braylon Trice would have been better off just sitting that one out. Let's be completely honest. Um, who was another guy? A couple guys that impressed me. Uh, Jalex Hunt, by the way, this is a name not a lot of people know about. Out of Houston Christian, try to get your hands on some Houston Christian film. See if you can do that. Six foot four, two fifty two. But he done pretty well. He done pretty well. Uh, he, he used to play safety, and now he's down as an edge rusher. He looked pretty good at the Senior Bowl. He ended up running a four six six forty, which was pretty solid. A 10 foot eight broad jump, which was the best in the entire group. And broad jump and vert shows explosion. So I do believe his stock will go up a little bit. Jalex Hunt will be a name to watch for somewhere down the line. He kind of reminds me of like the BJ Thompson of last year. Because BJ Thompson kind of come on at the shrine at the senior at one of those bowls. That's where the Chiefs fell in love with him. And then you see that we took a shot on him. Uh, there was another linebacker there. Could be able to rush off the edge. Kalen DeLoach from Florida State. I thought, look, he wasn't – he's not going to be a linebacker that just comes out from day one and just destroys you. It's not – that's not going to happen at all. Um, but his – I mean, come on. He ran so well yesterday. So well, he ran a four four seven, uh, a four four seven forty. Uh, I'll bring up his measurables for you just to make sure they're right. He's about five eleven and a half, so he's right at about the six foot mark. Um, thirty one and a half inch arms. This is from a linebacker, two hundred and ten pounds. He he scored an overall score at the combine, a seventy one, which made him the fifteenth ranked linebacker. But when you're running a four what was it? Four, four, seven. I mean, come on. Athleticism score wasn't, you know, he's only 19th in athleticism. But when you look at all the production put together, he was the seventh rated linebacker. A 30 and a half inch vert and a broad jump to nine foot 11. That's weird because verts and broads usually, 
usually tell the tale of explosion. So at a four four seven, you'd have thought he'd have jumped higher than a, a thirty five and a broad jump of a nine eleven. But yeah, he's just undersized. He's undersized, but he does have a a a strong football pedigree. Um, he looks like a strong safety, and he probably could be a strong safety, but he will be maybe an off ball linebacker. He's very athletic when he blitzes. He's got great body control. Um, he can play man to man coverage. Uh, he did it at Florida State. He played man to man, but he does have a lot of, uh, I want to say like mental breakdowns in some of his routes. Like he just, he kind of just had, I mean, a brain fart, I guess you could say, on a lot of it. But I think he could be a special teamer. I really do. I think he could do that. He can shoot gaps. He can get after the ball. Uh, I mean, he's just athletic. He, he's pretty impressive if you're blitzing. So if you want a guy sort of like, you know, like I said, if his, if his, if his coverage skill was a little better, he could be a perfect like Willie Gay replacement at a four four seven, because what did Willie do well? He blitzed off the edge. That's what this kid can do, but Willie could also cover. Willie wasn't the greatest, you know. By the way, that was one of his knocks. He never really turned into a great corner, or not corner, but a great coverage linebacker. He was very serviceable, but never great. I wonder if this kid could be coached up just a little bit. I really do. But he d he did have a lot of busted coverages with his responsibilities. So it, it is what it is. I think he's probably a mid-round kind of guy, but I just thought he kind of impressed me a little bit. Um, Layatu Latu, that's another edge rusher. I mean, he did, did okay, but just look at this guy. Look at this guy. Does he really look like he's physically imposing enough to be an edge rusher in the NFL? Like, I'm not trying to knock him, but I just do not see – him being able to come into the NFL and just tear it up. Like, I just don't see it. But right now, he's being described as a lock first-round pick, maybe the first one off the board. They're putting him above Jared Verse. Um, yeah, I just don't know. I don't know about it. He's had a little bit of injury concerns. He's 6'5", 259. I mean... Okay, 260, that's not super small. He just doesn't look it. He just really doesn't. It's so strange. I don't know. Dallas Turner at 247 looks bigger than he does. He just does. He looks bigger. And and, and Latu's 259. Like, he's 12 pounds. I, I don't know. It's weird. But he did look smooth. He looked smooth. He looked confident in all of his drills. Um you know, I, he did enough to, I think, stay, keep himself in the first round. I think his medicals answered enough questions. I think it'll be fine. But he does have to, when the medicals do come out, that is going to be what will keep this guy out of the first round. Again, so far, it looks like they might be fine, the medical checks. But we're not, we don't get those. We don't get them very often unless it's crazy. Um, Kool-Aid McKinstry, that's a guy. Now, I will say we got some medical on him today. Ian Rappaport says during an NFL Combine eval, doctors found that the All-American Kool-Aid McKinstry has a Jones fracture in his right foot. Sources say McKinstry won't work out in Indy, but will do so at his pro day. Then he will get it fixed. He should be 100% before training camp. That might be something to watch, guys. Kool-Aid already was a second-round pick, in my opinion. He was a second-round pick. If you were to tag trade, which we've tagged, if you were to trade Legereus Sneed and that injury was to push Kool-Aid McKinstry down to the bottom of the second round, Brett Beach and them might have a very interesting, uh, an Alabama corner that played under Nick Saban that is a very good corner. He's not, ac he's not exceptional, but I could see back in first round talent. That could be a guy that could slide down to us in the second. That kind of could be kind of intriguing. Um, but we don't really know 100%. But I'm going to get back. I'm going to get to the comments here and just uh, talk to you guys for just a little bit. I've had uh, a lot of info thrown at you. I get it. It's a lot of info for me, too. Like, let's be honest. My head's about to explode, baby. Um, but, yeah, it's just one of those things where, all of these kids, you're going to have some shortcomings. You're going to have things that make you look good. And basically, like I said, you can't be too overly critical in one position 
one little thing. I think you have to watch the film. I think the football. I think at the end of the day, we, especially draft analysis and um, scouts, will start getting into the nitpicky. You know, well, his arms a half inch too short. His he's three pounds too light. You know, his forty was a little bit too. You know, point zero one off of what I like, so I'm not going to take him. I think that's where you start getting in trouble. Sometimes you just got to watch. You just got to watch. Julia said, when does free agency start? I want to say it's somewhere around the 15th. Let me make sure. Um, yeah, I want to say it's somewhere around the, the 15th. It's usually right mid-December. But, yeah, uh, I'm curious to see what Veach does in free agency. I really am. I'm very curious to see what he does. For the last few years, he's come right out of the gate and just boomed. Uh, free agency opens up March 13th this year. So two days earlier than last year. I think it was the 15th last year. I think it just opens on a month. No, it's a Wednesday. So not next Wednesday, not the 6th, but the Wednesday after that. So we're about 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, about 10 days out. So here in about 10 days, going back to my point, I feel like Brett Veach may already have somebody under his his little uh, scheme and you know what I mean? Maybe looking to sign somebody right off the rip. He's done that for the past few years. So we'll see. Um, Brian says, are all your Thursday preferences considered out of reach now? I kind of liked those. Yeah. I'm hearing that Chop, not Chop Robinson. Why not say Chop Robinson? I'm hearing Darius Robinson, by the way, Brian. Um, you know, he, he's climbing up the boards. Like, look, he didn't overly impress at the combine yesterday. Like, he didn't overly impress, in my opinion. But he did enough that keeps his momentum going, if that makes sense. Like, he... He he did just enough to keep it going. I don't think he lost anything. But he looked okay. I mean, it was a 49540. Okay, not the greatest. And a lot of people might say, "Oh, he's too slow. Get him out." But man, straight line speed is just not what they want in those guys. And I would say he probably clocks faster than that anyway. Um so I don't I think his I don't want to say his floor Is 25 the Lions? I think they're 25. Are they 29? Where I think it's 29. So wherever the Lions pick, I think that that is probably right where he may go. I think the Lions would like to put him opposite of Aiden Hutchinson. I think he fits what they do. He's tough. He's physical. He's got that Dan Campbell mentality. Um, it's a hometown kid. Another one. You know, and I think they want that. I feel I feel like going after the Aiden Hutchinsons and the Darius Robinsons and people that's got some ties to Detroit. I think they it's almost like a Detroit versus the world kind of scenario that they're kind of tapping into there. So I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if that's where he goes. He's got thirty four and a half inch arms. I mean, daggone, that's huge. If I'm not mistaken, thirty four and a half inch might be longer than our boy Chris Jones was 34 and a half inch he's got the same arms as Chris Jones and Chris Jones has got some of the massively most freakish long arms in the world by the way Chris Jones 34 and a half inch arms Quentin Williams 33 and a fourth inch arms Christian Wilkins 32 and a half inch arms Chris Jones got two inches longer arms Aaron Donald two inches longer than Dar than uh, Aaron Donald as well so I mean Robinson's got everything. I'll say Robinson probably don't get by Detroit, but if he gets to the Chiefs, they're very well going to consider it. Jatavian Sanders could get to us as well, unless the Bengals were to snag him because of Brock Bowers. So I really don't think all of them are off the board, though. Um, I, there, there's chances. Julia says, I'm hearing a lot of interest from Sneed from Arizona. Have y'all heard anything? I have not. I'm look. A lot of people under the assumption that Arizona is going to go into the draft, and I think they're sitting at four. They're sitting behind the top three teams who everybody thinks is going to take 
Caleb Williams, Drake May, Jaden Daniels, the three quarterbacks, and then they're just going to have Marvin Harrison Jr. fall right in their lap because they need, you know, weapons, weapons for Kyler Murray, okay? I don't know if that's what they will do. I, If you watched, if you watched the way Arizona, I think it was their GM, if you watch his reaction to the way Dallas Turner worked out yesterday, would it surprise you if they took the big, the, the pass rusher right there? No, pass rushers are premium and wide receivers are deep. You take the best pass rusher on the board with Dallas Turner, and then at the top of the second round, you get yourself the wide receiver. If you can trade for Snead, you take the top pass rusher and then pair him with Snead and then give us their second round pick. I'll gladly do that. Could you imagine if we had Arizona's second round pick in our first? You could presumably take R32. You could take R32 paired up with like a fourth or a fifth, like we did with, I think it was, was it New England? Who did we trade up with to get McDuffie? I think it was New England. We traded up. But look, you could do something similar to that and pull pull yourself right back into the top of the 20s. Grab a guy. Maybe you get your tackle there. Maybe you can get one of the guys that were to fall. Or maybe you just go up and get Jatavion Sanders. Maybe you go get the playmaker. Maybe you go up and you get the wide receiver. Maybe, maybe they value an A.D. Mitchell or a Brian Thomas Jr. or... I don't know. You never know. But maybe you have another draft like that. Could you imagine another draft like that draft? It, it would be insane. But no, I've not heard nothing, Julia, for real. Um, it's intriguing. It's intriguing, I guess. Um, Ruben says, A.D. Mitchell says he loved to catch passes from Pat. I like A.D. Mitchell. I think he's, t in my opinion, out of the Texas wide receivers, A.D. Mitchell's the one I would rather have over Xavier Worthy. I... Right now, right now, after just watching all the film and different things, I think A.D. Mitchell's better than Xavier Worthy. I think his upside's better. Maybe not. I, I mean, I don't want to sound, like, arrogant, but I'm just saying, like, I don't I don't see I, – I see Xavier Worthy as a decent football player. Do I see Zay Flowers? You can comp to Zay Flowers, but he's not going to be Zay Flowers. I can almost guarantee that. He's not going to do it. I don't think his body type's similar enough. He's short and he's fast. Other than that, I just I think Zay Flowers is a little bit better, well built. He'll hold up a little better. Um, let's go down the list here and let's let's get some more comments. Let's get some more comments, baby. Um, Becky says we may have a hard time trading up. That's for sure. I think a lot of teams, I, I was always under the impression, I said this a few years ago when we first started, I feel like the Chiefs are starting to fall into that Chiefs fatigue category. And I think even the league's starting to feel it. I think that's why you're starting to get bogus accusations from the Jets now about leaking game plans and, and uh, you know, just all kinds of crap. It, to me... I feel like a lot of teams don't want to like if Veach comes and he's like, Hey, I'd like to trade up to pick number 18. Are you, are you available to help me? You may take the trade because you're like, well, this is going to benefit me. But also, for example, if you're sitting in the AFC at anywhere in the AFC and you think you're a playoff team. Okay. If you think you're a playoff team, you've got a chance to play the chiefs. So do you want to load up a back to back Super Bowl champion, a dynasty? Do you want to load them up with another big time? Like, left tackle to protect Pat or a big time wide receiver. Say they're trying to come up to like pick 17 or 18 to get, say, you know, Brian Thomas Jr. out of LSU. Kid caught 17 touchdowns last year. Deep threat, crazy. He's MVS on steroids that can actually catch the ball. You think a team's going to want to do that? Like, I don't know. Like, I'm always under the impression that they just may not want to help Kansas City anymore. But again, people say that's crazy. They'll help whatever they can to help their team. I don't know. I don't, I just really don't. Casey Moe. Yeah, with the five gifted. Appreciate you, Casey Moe. Appreciate you, brother. That makes six gifted given today. You know, we get on here and we get, we do just as anytime I can fit in some stuff, dude. I'm going to tell you how my day went yesterday. So I woke up, 
I done insane amount of draft stuff. Then I did a live for you guys. Then I got off. I went to work for eight hours. I come home. I had 12 minutes. I counted it. 12 minutes of peace and freedom. And I sat on my couch. And after 12 minutes, I said, well, I got to watch a little bit more film before I go to bed. So I watched 20 more minutes of film and then went straight to bed. I woke straight up this morning, jumped right back into the combine. Now I'm doing a live again, getting ready to go to work, and I'm going to come back. It's just nonstop. It's nonstop. So when people like Casey Mo and Enrique and and Ron and everybody that throws out gifted memberships, man, A, you're helping the channel grow, appreciate you, and B, that's a little bit of money compensation for me, and I appreciate it. I, I appreciate it. I really do. Um, you keep me afloat. <laughs> you, 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 make it, you make it worth it. So look, I've spent one hour and Ron pays me a compensation for an hour and I appreciate you. If I could get this all the time, Ron and Casey and uh, who else? If I said Ron for the five gifts, I'm sorry. For Casey for the five gifts and Ron for the one. Boy, if I get that a lot, <laughs> I may not have to like do so much stupid stuff and I could just kind of do this more. But I do appreciate you guys. And if you guys get anything from Casey, a gifted membership, make sure you got those turned on. If you get it, thank them. Uh, legendaries ketchups in the chat for Casey. Appreciate you guys. Uh, I appreciate y'all you guys in the chat and look guys, I really do. JCP 4,000 with the two bomb. He said, who was the last number one overall QB that won a super bowl? Good night. That's a good question. Jeez. I don't think Peyton Manning was drafted. Number one. Was he? Who was the last number one QB? Who would be the last number one drafted QB to win a Super Bowl? Who would it be? I have no clue. Eli? Eli Manning. That, that, yeah, right? What year was Eli drafted? I think it is. I think it's got to be Eli Manning, right? What a great question. But that just goes to show you that sometimes the number one pick is not always the best choice. Because, look, C.J. Stroud probably should have went number one last year. But, again, a lot of that, by the way, is um, a lot of that, by the way, is team fit and scheme, right? So, again, but, yeah, Caleb, and, uh, Caleb Williams, he says my point exactly. Caleb Williams is probably not the answer. Look, Caleb, if you if anybody's under the assumption that Caleb Williams is enough to just go change that Bears team roster right now and win, you're out of your mind. But also, I don't I don't love Caleb Williams as a quarterback. Like a lot of people think it's weird, but I honestly think Jaden Daniels may be better. I really do. That kid is the first kid ever to throw for I want to say like 13,000 and run for like 3 or 4 or something. It's it's incredible what he's done in FBS history. Um yeah, I don't know. If Jaden Daniel, I'm going to tell you right now, if Jaden Daniel had 15 more pounds on his frame, I think he's a better QB. Sometimes, like with Caleb Williams, I feel like he just, he tries too hard. But but I will not, I, I will say this. USC had a crappy defense, and he had to put up 35 and 45 a game. So he knew he needed to score in every play. So he's exhausting every down. He's just trying this, trying that. And, I mean, he made a lot of good plays. He's not Patrick Mahomes. But I feel like in the NFL, sometimes you just have to learn to play within the system. And you're starting to see Pat do that now. Yeah, he still has greatness when he gets outside the pocket. And every once in a while, he'll create something nice. But sometimes you just got to learn to be in the pocket and stay in the play. But he is not better than Pat. There is no way. That may be the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life. I get so tired of hearing everybody compared to Patrick Mahomes. Like, Patrick Mahomes is barely even Patrick Mahomes. Like, he he really is. If Patrick Mahomes, you know, goes in, think about this. If Pat Mahomes goes into next year's season and slips up just a tiny bit and doesn't win a Super Bowl, he don't even live up to what Patrick Mahomes is known for, which is greatness, Super Bowl, Brady-esque, amazing week to week he can hardly live up to himself 
I mean, look at the Jets game. He looked horrible. I'm so glad McCo Harmon leaked the entire offensive game plan so that the defense knew exactly what was happening. But against the best defense in football, Zach Wilson plays the best he's ever played in his life, knowing the game plan. What kind of stupidity BS are they talking about? But again, yeah, nobody's Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes is barely Patrick Mahomes. And and, and that's what it is. So yeah, um, Chris Wright. What's up, Chris? He says, Caleb has Jamarcus Russell written all over him. Yeah, I don't know if I go that far. <laughs> Poor Jamarcus, but dude, I I don't think he's a complete lock. Now I will say I think Drake May has got all the size and the intangibles and the arm strength. He kind of reminds me of the Levis, but you seen the Levis fall last year. But at the same time, if they're smart and they learn from history, Levis actually looked pretty good. So even though he fell, he played well. And you're like, how in the world did Levis fall the second round? So maybe they don't allow Drake May to fall knowing that he may be the Will Levis. But if history does repeat itself, Drake May may fall. Um, I think J.J. McCarthy, actually, I think I've got him right now as I put out that Bucky Brooks mock draft review, and he had J.J. McCarthy going to the Broncos. And I said, eh, maybe. But, dude, the more I'm reading, the more I'm watching, the more I'm digging in. I'm not saying J.J. McCarthy's better than what I thought he was, but that really may be the floor for J.J. McCarthy, like for real, because Denver needs a quarterback. They need one. They need it, and they don't have a second-round pick. So if you don't take J.J. McCarthy at that pick, you're not getting him in the third round, and you're not even going to get a starter in the third round. They have to take him there. J.J. McCarthy will pick. I I almost firmly believe now that J.J. McCarthy – is going to be the fourth QB off the board, and he could, before it's all said and done, beat Drake May. Crazy. But I will say this, he's easily moldable. Um, I don't think he's he's not got any bad habits. He's very solid. He is a quarterback that will play within a system. Um, on third and long, they were rarely in third and long because he ran the offense so well. But when they got to the third and 11, third and 12, he got out of the pocket. He can make the play. He has a pretty good arm, pretty good accuracy. I think he's got a lot of intangibles coaches want, and he don't have a lot of bad habits. I think J.J. McCarthy is going – that's a name. Keep watching. I think J.J. McCarthy, before it's said and done, may start pushing QB3, uh, just depending. But, yeah, I think somewhere at pick 12, and, and that's crazy. I didn't really think so. I, at first I thought J.J. McCarthy is like the 25th best player on the board maybe somewhere around that. And it's like, he may get there though. You never know. It's crazy. Uh, a lot of people say don't overdraft, but sometimes you have to overdraft. Uh, Pops. Pops says Caleb Williams is overrated. Yeah. I don't, I don't think he's the greatest. Uh, I really do. I think Jaden, da- I think I'd rather have, I'd rather have Jaden Daniels to be honest. I may actually look, I'm gonna be honest. I may want Drake May and J.J. McCarthy over Caleb Williams. This sounds crazy right now. I sound insane. But when it's all said and done, I don't know if Caleb Williams is him. I just don't. Something about him just rubs me the wrong way. I don't know what it is. Uh, Ruben says, any left tackles? Any left tackles we can draft, Mikey? Um, Dude, this is a deep class. A deep class for tackles. Now, what I will say is, is... There are a lot of guys that we've got to wait for to see how they measure because you've got, uh, I think his name's Jordan Morgan out of uh, Arizona, plays left tackle. He's being projected as a first-round pick. But honestly, he was getting beat up by even uh, Trice for uh, Washington. Trice was beating up on him during the season. and, And again, I say don't just look at one one game, one play, blah, blah, blah. But yeah, I'm not for sure he's a tackle. I think he could be a guard. I think he may be a guard. I think that might be where he goes. Um, Guyton again from Oklahoma. I think he can go both ways. I think he probably goes before we pick, but you've got, you've got Mims out of Georgia. I don't know if he's going to fall any. Um, There are a few, man. I'm telling you, Rosen Gardner, I think his name's Rosen Garter. Is that how he pronounces it? I want to make sure. I don't want to get this guy's name wrong because I'm telling you, he's out of Washington. Let me make sure I'm giving you his exact 
name and everything properly. Roger Rosengarten. That's how he pronounces it. And and I'm going to tell you right now, like if you go back and you watch, if you the one game you watch is the national championship game, you're going to say, good Lord, this guy sucks. But look, he's 6'6", 300. And I'm telling you, he's not that bad. I think before it's all said and done, he will be a sneaky day two pick. I really do. He does play right tackle. He plays right tackle. Can he get to left? I don't know. I don't know if he can go to left, but he's a very good athlete, so maybe he can. Um, I'm kind of curious. I mean, there's a lot of guys. There really are. Um, I'm trying to think, like, exactly. I don't have my big board or anything in front of me right now, so I can't really go off the top of my head. But I will say that, let me see. I wonder what the top ranked tackle is according to like say Mel Kuyper. So Joe Alt, yeah. See, you're not going to get Joe Alt. Olu Fashanu, see, I, I don't even name him. He's probably a top ten to fifteen pick. Uh, you're also going to have guys like um, Troy Fatanu, who again I think he could maybe be a. It wouldn't surprise me if he's not a top twelve pick, but I think he's a guard. Um, Talise Fuaga from Oregon State. I just he may be the one that falls to the 19 to 25 mark. He may be a guy you could jump up and get. J.C. Latham out of Alabama. He is a clear-cut right tackle who's ready to go day one. Can he get to left tackle? Possibly. Can Tyler Guyton go left tackle? I think so. Uh, Adarius Mims out of Georgia and Jordan Morgan. Those are your guys. Those are your first-round guys. And honestly, I don't know. I think if I had to just pick, if I if say I could get up to anywhere in the draft, I think the best one by far is, I think it's Joe Alt and Olu Fashanu out of Penn State. I think those are your definite left tackles that could do it. I will say Talise, uh, Talise Fuaga out of Oregon State could probably, I think he may be able to play left. And I would think Tyler, uh, Tyler Guyton could do left as well. But the thing about Guyton is I think you're going to have to coach him up a little bit. From what I can see, I think you got to coach him just a little bit, but I think he's fine. Um, let's get back to the uh, chat over here, see what's up. Uh, Casey says, sign Tyron Smith. Wanya either starts back up or draft D.L. heavily. I mean, Tyron Smith plays okay. He's still – he's 33. He's older, and he's battled a lot of injuries. But uh, I don't know. I don't know if I want to pay almost ten million a year to a thirty-three-year-old that may fight injuries, but at the same time, if there's nothing there, you may have to. It's weird. You may have to. I don't know. I I find it hard to believe Dallas won't go ahead and re-sign him. I really don't. I think that might be. I think they'll try to do it. Now, look, they may not. They may not. Um, let's do a few more winners and losers before I before I hit the bricks here. Let me see if I can find my list of winners and losers. There was a lot of them. Um, I want to say Chop Robinson from Penn State. He he was a um, winner or loser. You can take it whichever you want. Measurables loser, forty yard dash winner, right? Uh, but his running mate, Adissa Isaac, Penn State. I thought he looked okay yesterday. I thought he did okay in the drills. I thought he looked pretty decent. Um, he's decently explosive. He's not like the greatest, uh, you know, he's not the greatest prospect in the world to ever come out. He's not going to set the world on fire or anything, but I, he's pretty serviceable for what he does. He's 6'4", 3'8", 247. He's a little undersized. He did run a 4'7", not too bad, and he had almost 34-inch arms. His wingspan, by the way, was like an 81 that was in the top, like, that was one of the top ones. There was only a few. There was a kid out of UConn named Eric Watts, 6'5", 274. He had an 84-inch wingspan. That dude is a pterodactyl. And, I mean, and was there a guy that had a bigger day, by the way? Was there a guy that had a bigger day than Miles Cole out of Texas Tech? Miles Cole out of Texas Tech had himself a day. He really did. 6'6", 278, and he ran a 4'6", an 86-inch wingspan, 36 and 7 8 inch arm length. 
Like he may have, he may be talking now about first round. I'm still going to put a round two grade on him because he's raw. He's, he's very raw. But good grief, he had himself a day. And I don't know if it's fair to compare him to the kid out of Texas Tech last year that the Raiders took. I get it. It's easy to do that. But I'm not going to be lazy and say that, you know, the other guy bombed, so he's going to bomb. Maybe he won't. Um, I thought Fabian Lovett out of uh, Florida State, uh, defensive interior player, pretty good. He had pretty good arms, 35 and a half inch arms. They were the third longest by the uh, defensive lineman in NFL combine history. So pretty good there. 83 inch wingspan, 83 and a half inch wingspan for Fabian Lovett. That was a 90th percentile in his position. So Fabian Lovett, you know, at 6'3", 315, that could be a kid that maybe that's a Derek Naughty replacement. That might be your Derek Naughty guy. I mean, he's a little, he's not as big as Derek Naughty. I think Derek Naughty was in what, 330s, 340s? Maybe. Maybe wrong about that. But, I mean, he's got a little bit of beef to him. There was another kid out of Mississippi State, by the way. Chris Jones, Mississippi State. Jaden Crumedy, I think is how he pronounces it. Crumedy or Crumedy, I don't know how he pronounces it. He kind of looked like Chris Jones. He really did. It was so strange. He's 6'4", 301, so he's almost right at Chris Jones. I think He might even weigh a little bit more than Chris Jones. But 6'4", six, six, 301, he had 33-inch arms, which is right on par with Chris Jones, 77-inch and a half wingspan, and he ran a 497 40. But even more impressive, the kid ran a 10-yard split. A 10-yard split and a 1.69. The, the measurables that you want on arm length and 10-yard and ten yard split is somewhere around 32 and a half inches. You want them to be longer than 32 and a half, but 32 and a half is acceptable. Actually, you can get to 32, but you're pushing it. But 32 and a half, and really your gold standard is right at 33. He has 33 inch, okay? Chris Jones, again, in comparison was 34 and a half. But he's right there. Your 10 yard split, a 176. You need to get better than 176, but 176 is about where you're at. And yes, you can go out to about a 179, but when you start getting a 18, you're not as explosive. But a 176, and I would say gold standard is about 169. This kid did a 169. A 169. He is gold standard measurables at 64301. Jaden Crumedy may be a baby Chris Jones. He may be a baby a, a baby Chris Jones. Another guy that fits all those intangibles, by the way, Gabe Hall. He had himself a day too. Gabe Hall looked good. 66 291. He's a little thinner. So he's closer to the Chris Jones. I'm pretty sure Chris Jones is not over 300. I could be wrong about that. Let me go look. Because he just doesn't, he carries his weight very well. Um, He carries his weight very well. So, okay, so they say Chris Jones is 6'6", 310. But who knows when that's been updated. So Chris Jones is right around the 310 mark. I'll say somewhere between 300 and 310. Um, you can't always trust Google. But, again, you know, Gabe Hall out of Baylor, 6'6", 291. He's over the gold standard at arm length. Gold standard's 33, remember? He's 34 and a half. That's Chris Jones' arm length. He wears number 95, doesn't he? What's that remind you of? 172. The gold standard's 169. So he's right, right, 0 .03 right off the gold standard. But 176 is what the elites are. So 176, and he runs 172. And by the way, let's put that in perspective. Um, Justin Matabuke run a 173 10-yard split. He's faster. Chris Jones had a 169. That's why I made that the gold standard. 169, that's amazing. Uh, he's not there. He's a little behind it. Quinnen Williams actually faster than Chris Jones at a 167. Aaron Donald, the fastest that I've seen, a one six three. You want to talk about why Chris, uh, why Aaron Donald was a monster? That that's your reason. Christian Wilkins though, 
Christian Wilkins is the outlier in all these. Very productive, Christian Wilkins. 32 and a half inch arms, which is under the gold standard. A 176 10 yard split, which is right on the the line for where you want to be. So he's right there. That's why I made it 176. He's right there. So he, he's faster along the board. I think Gabe Hall. Sorry, I had a good drink. I think Gabe Hall is a guy that I'm very curious in. I want to watch more film on Gabe Hall, more film on Jaden Crumedy. Crumedy, Crumedy. I'm going to call him Crumedy. I'm going to call him Cr- oh, Jaden Crum. Let's just call him old Crummy. Crummy boy. I want to watch those two a little bit more. I really do. I want to watch those two a little bit more. Did I miss anybody on my list? No. So, again, some winners on the day. I'll just recap. Darius Robinson, I think, was a winner. I think he'd done enough to prove that he's a first-rounder. Peyton Wilson, linebacker. He's going to be a beast. I thought Trevin Wallace from UK looked okay as well. Byron Murphy, that kid's a heck of a football player. Braden Fisk made himself a lot of money yesterday. Tavondre Sweat was right on the line. You could say winner, you could say loser. Um, Some of his measurables are fine. He looked a little gassed in some of his drills. He didn't look as explosive, but you know, film, he's got the, he's, he's got a good win rate. I mean, how are you not getting, you know, how are you not explosive? You have a good win rate. He's going to get gassed. He's 360 pounds. So take that whichever way you want to. Uh, Some more winners. I thought uh, Chop Robinson, he's right there on the cusp, too. I think Chop Robinson and uh, Tavondre Sweat are right there on the line. Like, do you want to say measurables they lost, 40 they won? Uh, I'll let it go either way. I thought Adissa Isaac out of Penn State looked pretty good. Uh, Edge rusher. I thought Edger and Cooper, linebacker out of A&M, looked really good. Uh, Gabe Hall, Jaden Crumedy, Jalix Hunt from Houston Christian I thought looked good. I thought Jared Verse solidified himself as a first-round pick. Um, Kalen Deloach. The linebacker out of FSU, I think he's a mid, a middle of the pack. I don't think he hurt himself. I don't think he. I think he helped himself more than hurt himself because when you run in the four fours as a linebacker, I think you help yourself. What is going to help him is if he needs to. He's a converted safety. He needs to get his coverage skills better and put on a clinic at the Florida State Pro Day, and if he can show he can cover better, he can get into the third round. But right now, I've got him fourth or fifth round. Uh, Leatu Leitu out of UCLA, again, he looks a little small, but, I mean, they say he's 260. So, I, I guess he's a thick 260. I don't know. He just looks so small. There's just something. I don't know. Okay, he's fine. He's probably going to be a first-round pick for sure. I think he's fine. And then we heard that Kool-Aid uh, – Kool-Aid McKinstry has got something wrong with his foot. He's going to do the drills. It's Jones fracture. He's going to get it fixed. Can he fall to the Chiefs in round two? That would be a steal. Um, The one other guy, there's one other guy that I did not talk about, and I thought he looked good yesterday too. I think he won himself a little bit, and that's uh, Edifon Ulofoshoyo. Ulofoshoyo. I don't know how he pronounces that bad boy. What's the deal with these names? We're just going to call him Edifon Ulo. From Washington. He's a team captain. He plays linebacker. I thought he ran very well yesterday. I really did. I thought he ran well. I thought all of his uh I thought all of his his measurables were fine. He ended up running a four five six. I mean, that's pretty solid. That's right there. He's he's six foot and a half. Okay. Six foot and a half, uh, two thirty six. He's got thirty three inch arms. He's ninth overall in total scoring linebackers, fifth overall in athleticism score. He ran a 159 10-yard split, a 10-foot, 8-inch broad jump, and almost a 40-inch vert. To me, he's a little older. He's a six-year player. Okay, he, he was a walk-on there, but he's a six-year player. But look, he's physically tough. He's mentally tough. Um, he had some injury issues back in 2021, 2022. Um, but he come back from him, he was, he was productive. Uh, he's built built very strong, if you can't tell. I mean, he's stocky as can be. Uh, I, I, he just looks good. He, he, I would say like short area speed, he's not super, super quick. But at the same time, when you look at what he did at the combine, I think he may have, he may have proved with the 159 10-yard split and the 45640, I think he got rid of that negative stigma. So, I think he could be a serviceable day 
uh, a day three linebacker. I, I mean, I don't know where. I'd say round four, round five. Maybe round six. Just depends on how it falls. Um, but, yeah. And if I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong about this. Could be wrong. But I think his name translates into, like, I think his name translates into warrior or something like that. War? War time? I want war? I think it's him. I think I heard that, and, and I think it's him. Insane. Uh, but, yeah, those are my winners and losers, man. Uh, again, it's one of those things where it's all, you know, it's just what I felt. So, again, could I be right? I don't know. Could I be wrong? Probably. But that's how it works. Um, I appreciate you guys being here. If you don't care, hit that like button for me. If you don't care, if you like this kind of content, and usually Steve's with me. Again, Steve's working. Um, but we're going through this. I would have. I was going to show you guys a bunch of clips. Like, I had a bunch of clips you know, brought up and I did clips yesterday, but boy, YouTube laid the smack on me with those clips, dude. If you show a fraction of a second of a college football game, they will come get you. They showed up to my door this morning with a pitchfork. They were like, bro, did you put a college football clip online? And I was like, yeah. And they're like, come outside. I was about to get tarred and feathered. Uh, so yeah, I don't know if I can show clips anymore. Good Lord. They cried a river over it. I've never seen nobody cry so much about a clip. Um, you'd think it helped grow the game, okay? But ignorance always wins, it seems. But I appreciate you guys being here. I appreciate you guys. We just hit 25K subs. If you guys want to get over there and hit that sub button, that would be great. If you want to join, become a part of the ACU crew, that would be freaking awesome too, by the way. Join.allchiefedup.com. Starts at five bucks a month, I think. Memberships. Uh, Patreon.com slash allchiefedup. We're going to do a lot more stuff over there. Lots more draft content. If you need yourself some new stuff, go check out merch.allchiefedup.com. We got the Sneed McDuffie 24. That kind of makes me sad. If, if Sneed gets traded, the shirt instantly becomes a throwback. But you know what? That's okay. But we got the back-to-back -back KCs. We got the Kansas City Strong, which all proceeds will go wherever they need to go um, on that one. And also, it says uh, enjoy the free shipping with promo code CHAMPIONS. But that did expire today. So I'm sorry. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to talk Steve into throwing something else. I'll, I'll talk him into getting a new code. Uh, but by the way, I appreciate you guys being here. Uh, check it out on Spotify. We got stuff going on on there. Anywhere you listen to podcasts, we'll be back with more stuff. I think they're getting ready to run more stuff today. They're probably already doing it. I'm behind. I got to go watch some combine right now. And we'll be back tomorrow night. Tomorrow night with a live Saturday night, the tailgate. And we're going to cover everything that happened tonight at the combine and probably tomorrow at the combine. It's going to be a big one. And I might do a 25K celebration while we're here. So you guys make sure and clear the calendars and get back for that one tomorrow night. Appreciate you guys being here. I know it was impromptu in the middle of the day, but hey, who don't like to talk Chiefs football? And who don't like to talk, you know, combine? That's where it is. Casey, you're right. Rook, a ro ro, -ro. That's the best name in the draft, a ro, ro ro And let me tell you something. He's a steal, I think. He's a steal. Remember that name. Appreciate you, Casey. You guys have a good one. I'll catch you guys on the flip. I'll see you tomorrow night. And uh, you guys have a good Friday evening. Go Chiefs. I, 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 I,